How's it going everybody? Jeff Chrysler here, a detail enthusiast, here with my next installment of my Border Models Lancaster build. So I've just been plugging away here, uh, weathering uh, the wings and tail from the last time I spoke to you. So coming along really nicely. I've done the chipping and I've done a bunch of the uh, using the AK uh, panel liner washes um, they work really well and then yeah much of the chipping i've done by hand just with a brush and uh and using some of those aluminum color ak uh, pencil crayons um so yeah coming along really nicely i'll show you this wing here it's really liking the finish on the uh on the wings there with the exhaust you can see here's this uh this hatch here, if you can focus, there we go. So just looking really, really great. And uh, yeah, great effects all around. So um, obviously I have yet to dull coat any of this. I'm gonna wait until the end when the whole model is fully assembled and the fuselage is painted and it'll be the final step of everything is to seal it with dull coat. But uh, yeah, these came out really nicely. So in this video, I'm going to be moving on from this. I'm going to put these away for safekeeping and uh, get right, right into the fuselage painting. So yeah, I'll lift this down. I'm just going to move these wings and tailplane out of the way. So I've just put the wings and tail in my case there for safekeeping and... Uh, Here's the fuselage lifted down and uh, taken out all the rest of the fuselage pieces to be painted in the main camouflage and black uh, combination. So I think what I'm going to be doing here, first, first and foremost, I've got the ASK masking set for all the windows and glazing. So I'm going to be masking off all of the windows using that masking set. And, uh, and then I'm going to basically... You can see how well this fits just dry, um, which is really good. It's going to help this whole process. Because of the main join and how I have to have this open to hook up all the wires as I'm joining the wings, I'm going to pre-paint all of this together, uh, uh, like the fuselage as a assembled assembly, but just dry fit. I'm not going to glue anything yet, but I will paint it all as it's fitted dry. and. Uh, and then I can easily just take it apart, do the big join, put it back together this time with glue and, uh, and do all my finishing in that after. So it's a bit unorthodox. It's not how I'd normally like to assemble models, um, but uh, you know, it's a, it's, it's a tricky process doing all this wiring and making it all work. So yeah, first things first, I'm gonna get everything masked here and make sure this all fits really well so that there's no you know, absolute minimal, you know, seam filling and all of that to do afterwards. But I, I've done this a few times already and it does seem to, yeah, you can see how well that just drops into place here. So I think it's going to fit very well um, without any glue, at least so I can paint it. And, uh, and then we'll fin finally add glue and hopefully have minimal finishing in the end. Okay, so I'm just uh, finishing up. I've been going along and masking all of the side windows using my ASK uh, scale masking set for the Border Lancaster. Um, I should mention I had purchased originally a uh, similar window masking set from Kits World, I believe is they're called. Um, started using it and they weren't sticking very well and you know, I just, I didn't feel good about it. And then I heard somebody else's opinion and that the ASK are much better quality. So, uh, so I decided to get, go with the ASK cause just don't want to risk any bleed on this model. So, um, yeah, these fit beautifully. You got to make sure you go along with the instructions and put the right number mask with the right one. Cause these windows are all there's about five different sizes and you can't really see it until you get, try to put the mask on and it's, you know, 
half a millimeter out <laughs> so yeah you got to go along and follow with the instructions and uh but yeah they fit beautifully they are exactly uh perfect masks so yeah i kind of wish i had done this earlier but uh here we go now we're ready for future stuff um so now with all those windows masked i can start dry assembling this if this fuselage and i've noticed i've got some issues at the bottom near the back here that i can't quite get it together and i think it might be one of these bulkheads so i'm going to carefully sand away those bulkheads a little more just to see if that'll allow me to get a tighter fit there um because everything there's so many pieces as you can see we got one two three uh four five uh pieces all going together six with this fuselage um that all have to line up perfectly so um so it's worth getting it perfect now um so yeah we'll get into that and dry assemble this and then uh, I'm just realizing before paint I'm gonna have to get all of this canopy basically assembled because a lot of it is painted in the camouflage um, you know this whole canopy for certainly is I can I can hold off and paint the turrets separately I'll probably build and paint those last but I'll get the rest of the the canopy and the bomb aimers uh, nose blister and that in um, before I paint all the camouflage. So I've just been cutting out and cleaning up the canopy frame sections. So it's uh, coming along, lots of flash on these. So it, it's uh, it's been quite a task coming in with, uh, you know, both knife and a whole bunch of needle files and sanders to try and get these nice and cleaned up. Of course, on this one, there's lots of little, like, uh, bolt and screw, like, hardware heads you can see there that you don't, you don't want to sand those away, but you want to sand around them because there is some seam lines in that that need to be cleaned up. So lots of really careful work trying not to bend and break pieces, but get them nice and clean. And then, of course, before I put this all together, I'm going to want to spray this um, I'm thinking it's going to be sprayed in a dark green. Certainly this upper section, you can see I put that little radar piece there. This upper section under the ca under the ca uh, canopy is going to be in the dark, the RAF dark green. So I'm going to mask off the open part of the canopy and spray that whole area in the dark green. And then I'll spray these in the dark green as well. So I believe these are actually eventually, once we put the glazing parts on, then I'll be masking the glazing and spraying the camouflage uh, as it goes over top of the canopy. You can see on this one, it, it, uh, there's a little bit on the back there and a little bit on the front here. Uh, kind of hard to tell there, You're getting my own reflection, but you can see the, the brown kind of comes across like this, uh, just at the front. So. We want to show that, so I've got that ASK masking set. So one, once the canopy's all installed with the framework underneath, like I say, I think I'm going to pre-paint this framework in the dark green so that that's what you see inside. Um, and then the camouflage will be visible only on the outside. I should say I've been studying all the photos in the Wing Leader book and I can't find any evidence that it it was actually painted in a cockpit green or anything light like that. So it seems to be quite dark. I don't think they paint it just black. So I'm gonna go with the dark green because we know that that's what was in this rear section. So I'm just gonna follow that. So it just sprayed the dark green, as you can see. So ready to assemble that canopy frame. Um, I'm gonna, Highlight and gonna come in with some black and some silver and just uh, pick off a few of these things that are on the ceiling there uh, On the framework there I should say and of course we've got the I should pull this out. This is the Curtain that will be suspended from there as well. I'll be gluing that in position um, I'm not sure about the color of these handles. They may be yellow. I'm not I'm gonna have to do some more research, but um yeah, we'll pick off a few of those things before we assemble it, uh, just hand paint them and then uh, get that all together and we can continue on. 
Okay, so coming right along here, you can see I assembled the frame into the canopy, the main canopy section. And actually I put the rear part of the canopy section on as well. Um, and just carefully did it using some uh, extra thin quick setting. Um, so I pre-painted the frame as I showed you before, and then I cleaned off just the top sections to bare plastic and set it in place, clamped it in place, and just did a couple careful, carefully placed drops of the quick setting, um, which capillaried in there and glued it to the uh, Perspex. So it's all in there, and uh, the lower pieces are not glued, so they're still kind of flex flexible, so I can, you know, move them around as I need to when I offer it up to the aircraft. Um, but the top section is glued in place, so it's it's where it should be. There's no issues with location. So you can see I've picked off some of those details with some paint. I've painted those uh, hand grabs in the yellow. Uh, I installed some uh, fine guitar wire that I painted in a light brown color as the the ropes, the rigging for that curtain. So there's four lines in there. Shows you in the instructions to add that. So. And then, of course, the curtain. I've just added that, too. Um, the curtain and the rigging rods, I used uh, this evergreen canopy glue. It's sort of like crystal clear. I've never used it before, but we're going to give it a go. It seemed seemed to work really well. And, uh, and of course, it dries clear, so you won't see it. Um, and, of course, I pre-painted this area, and, uh, and I have glued in the blister. Um, there is a rib there you can see but i believe that uh, once i offer this up it kind of comes up to that rib so that rib will still be exposed and the uh the uh ask masking set that i have will mask off the rest of this so once i install it i can mask it all in place um and one more thing i've added so there this is the bulletproof uh glass section which is installed to pr protect the engineers head <laughs> um, and of course a little ra radar piece there and you've got the the leather uh, crash rails to, again to protect their head so they don't bump when they're going under and I've added I was noticing in studying photos here you can see there's like a little data plate there on that bulkhead right beside the leather so and uh, when you look at the model there's actually a little raised area for that plate so I took an appropriate size data plate. I got these Airscale uh, cockpit placard plates. There's all different ones. I found one that looks similar to the picture and uh, popped it in there. So just gives you a little more realism there. So this is all looking really good. Um, I'm about ready to, I'm gonna let this all set for the night and uh, everything dry nicely. And, uh, and then tomorrow I can offer this up to the aircraft and uh, I'm probably gonna use I'm not sure what what cements I'm gonna use um, I might use some extra thin I might use some of this uh, the evergreen glue I'm not quite sure yet we'll see how much tension things are in um, but uh, yeah we'll be doing that tomorrow um, of course I can put this in as well uh, it's just sitting there um, but I gotta do some adjustment get that thing fitting really nicely and uh, yeah, I'm coming right along, and I've been working on this. It's just sitting there now, but uh, this side fuselage piece, and I've got, I've seemed to have fixed the issue at the back, so it all comes together properly and no gaps, and uh, so that's ready to assemble when the time comes. But I want to get this canopy all installed and masked and uh, prepared for the paint. Okay, and I've got the canopy now clamped in place, and I've just gone along with some extra thin and just dabbed it in along the perimeter, and you can see a capillary around. So we'll leave this overnight to set up, but that's the canopy installed, and uh, I still have to put in the side window pieces. I've got them cut and cleaned up here, so I'll be putting those in later, um, but... Uh, 
yeah, for now we just got the main piece clamped in place. It fit. took some working around and fitting and had to get in there with my tweezers and work some of those, uh, the frame struts to find their slots. And uh, once it all was located, it dropped right into place and just needed to clamp it down to hold its shape. So it should be good now. So we'll see what it looks like in the morning. So here we are, I've got the canopy all glued up and it's sat overnight, all the pieces and uh, looking really good. Um, one thing uh, I made sure to do was polish the inside of all of these Perspex pieces before I glued them in position so there's no fingerprints and, uh, um, you know, I <laughs> almost missed, it, missed doing it but uh, caught it at the last second and you know, noticed a bunch of big fingerprints and glad I was able to get them when I did. But uh, yeah, that's all glued up. Um, I had to do a little bit of sanding on the uh, this side just to make it fit perfectly in there, but not very much at all. It was a really good fit with everything. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's all done. So now I'm carrying on. I've I've been cutting out the pieces from the A sprue so that I can finish off this whole bomb aimers, the, the, make the bomb site. So you can see I've cut these pieces out here, just setting them in place where, they, where they're called out. And uh, so I know what's what, and uh, so now I gotta get into the B sprue and cut out those pieces. And uh, yeah, we'll be putting the bomb site together and getting the blister, the, the nose blister on with the side windows and the lower window get that lower part all buttoned up. Like I say, I'll do the, the top turret later. I'm just gonna mask that. Um, I'll temporarily put this piece in uh, just so I can paint it, but uh, it'll come out again when I go to put the turret on. Okay, coming along here, you can see I built up the bomb site and used some more of those air scale uh, cockpit placards and uh yeah looking really nice in there nicely detailed you can see that black and white placard on the top studied some photos of an original to get the location of it i've installed the side windows there there's some of the rest of the bomb aimers area you can see in the top center there's a light there and it's actually wired um so it's actually a clear clear piece that i've painted the frame black um, so that will light up this whole area and you can see I've got the bottom section of Perspex in there now too. I've just got to paint the edge of it black and then I'll be putting on the ball maimers blister to seal it all in there. And once that's on there, I'm just going to mask off this top opening and, um, and then get the uh, ASK masking set going and mask off all the cockpit windows and these front windows get it all masked up for paint. Okay, and look at that. I've got the bomb aimers blister glued in place. Um, I came around and rather than black, I uh, painted the outside perimeter in the cockpit green. Um, I, again, thank goodness for these great reference photos in this book, um, but you can see clearly it was green originally and most of the black and white photos it really shows up it's clearly a much lighter color than the black you can see a bit of it there quite weathered down but yeah definitely not the black it's the green so that's what they there again you can see the lighter color catching the sun there so yeah i had painted it black but i came back and, and redid it in the green luckily before i put the blister on and uh, once again, uh, both those side windows and the blister, I was able to get them fit in place. They are a beautiful, perfect fit all the way around. And I just came along and touched it with a couple drops of extra thin and it just capillaried around and made a nice uh, join. So uh, that looks really great. Very happy about that. You can see that uh, bomb site in there. I'm glad I was able to get the uh, little uh, tags decals on there so this is looking really good so my next steps like i say i'm going to mask off the hole here and uh and then 
get into the masking all the individual windows with that ASK set. Okay, and there we are. We've got the ASK masks installed. I still have yet to come in with some liquid mask and potentially uh, just regular masking tape um, just to fill in the rest of the blister. Uh, um, no, sorry, these uh, side blisters, they all need to be done with the, the liquid masking fluid. Uh, you can see those upper areas need to be done with liquid masking. And of course, the rest of the front bubble I'll do in the liquid masking. So I've got some pretty, some decent stuff here. The, uh, this drawing gum is uh, really good stuff I've used in the past and uh, it's nice and thick and uh, really easy to remove. And um, yeah, so we'll be spreading some of that on and that'll finish the masking. And just like that, I've decided to change my mind. Um, yeah, I, I can't go about getting this tight enough that I'm not going to have to do some, you know, careful filling and seam work. And, you know, if I'm going to go to all that work, I don't want to risk uh, ruining the lettering on the side or ruining my paintwork. So I'd rather do it uh, the right the first time. So I'm going to assemble the wings. I'm doing the main join now. So if you, as you can see, I've got one wing already in. Um, just carefully had to thread each wire one by one through the holes that I had made there, through through that hole, and then again through the bulkhead hole that I had made. Thread them through and tie them up inside and try to reduce the length of cable and get them all plugged in. And then and as I'm doing that, I'm sliding the wing on and uh, getting it all the way home. So that one's on and done. So I can st start going about the next wing like I say, I just kind of just get it started on here, so it's only on half an inch sort of thing, and then uh, then I thread all the wires through, get it all done up, and then slide it the rest of the way home. And uh, I'm going to be, uh, you can see what I'm doing, the wiring underneath that, I'm just using masking tape, and I'm going to um, put in uh, just a piece of green painted paper uh, just to cover all of this over and uh, blend it in so nothing shows through those side windows. It just looks dark in here. So um, maybe green, maybe flat black. Anyway, I was thinking actually, but just a piece of paper that's that width. I'm just going to lay it in there with, uh, you know, either glue or tape it on either end once the wires are plugged in and, uh, and then slide the wing home and seal it all up. Okay, so just sliding the fuselage section on, I can go to about there, and I can get the wing on that far as well uh, to meet the fuselage there, and just slide it all on together. So that's plenty of room to work in here with tweezers. So yeah, I'm going to get that piece of paper, like I say, cut out and sized, and then uh, I'll just have it at the ready. I can slide it in there last second and just put a couple globs of crazy glue or something to hold it down. And that should be fine. Okay, and here we go. We've got the fuselage together and glued and clamped. I'm doing it in stages, so I've just glued and clamped the top of it first. And then tomorrow I'll come in and clamp the bottom the same way and get it all glued. Um, just easier to do that way. Uh, this wing is not yet glued on. It, it is slid home, but I, I'm going to pull it out a, you know, half an inch or so and glue the ends of the struts uh, all the way around. Um, for all these main join stuff, I try to get the, the white um, uh, AKA or Tamiya cement. I think it's the, the strongest, thickest strength, so I use it for those areas that it's not going to be seen. Um, uh, I use a combination of that and extra thin, but um, depending on where it's going. So that's joined up. So like I say, tomorrow we'll get the bottom all clamped and done. And um, I didn't show you a picture. Maybe you can see it, but you can see my little black, flat black piece of card that I've got laying in across the top of all the wires. Um, so it keeps it under the window line. You can kind of see there's the window line and just see the black there hard to tell but it's yeah it's a big long rectangle that I sprayed and 
put uh, double-sided tape on the bottom of it and stuck it down over all the wires after taping the wires themselves down as best I could. So that all works and um, I did just plug it in a second ago and let it run and uh, boy those engines are still pretty noisy but uh, pretty great to see all the lighting work. I think once the propellers are on it'll help deaden it because um, it'll give it some weight um, but uh, yeah, there's still lots of vibration, so I won't annoy you with the sound, but uh, it all works and it's all connected c properly, so that's good. So I'll continue on tomorrow and I'll show you the next steps. Okay, and now I've flipped the aircraft over, as you can see, and I've glued the bottom edge, got it all clamped in place, and I've also glued the other wing on. This is the second one. Um, just slid it out and use some of that, uh, the heavier, uh, white Tamiya cement and put it on the spars there and then slid it together and, uh, and then came along the seams on both of them with a bit of extra thin, just dropping it along the seam so it could get pillory in there. So I'll let it set up. Uh, this is the morning after. Uh, so last night I had the whole top clamped, went to bed. Woke up this morning and I flipped it over and done the bottom and the wing. So now I'll go to work for the day and uh, by the time I come home this afternoon, this should be all set. Okay, and here we are. I've clamped up and glued the rest of the fuselage, adding the top sections here. I still have to do the bit around the turret, but uh, I've got these other top sections uh, clamped and glued in place. Um, again, using some of the, the white Tamiya cement as well as some extra thin along the edges. I do the white Tamiya cement just in the under areas where you can't see it to get a good strong bond. And then I come in along the edges and use the extra thin to capillary in to get those nice and tight. So yeah, just using all my clamps and you got to be careful when you're using tape over a glue joint. I always put little sticks under it so it doesn't capillary under the tape. Um, but yeah, that's looking very good. There is a little bit of, as you can see here, I'm going to have to do some filling work just back to where this panel starts. You can see this from here back is a solid panel. That's not actually a gap that's molded into the panel work, but this section here is, is a gap that I'm going to have to fill. Probably do a little bit of work around that uh, window too. But that seems to be it, just just there and, and a bit of that join. Now that join was originally a taped join, in the, and as well as this one, was originally taped joins from the factory on all Lancaster. As you can see, it's like a, a band of tape that they would wrap that join in. So I'm probably going to do something like that, use some decal sheet and cut it into a strip and put it on there before I paint that area, uh, just to replicate that join, the, the tape join. Um, a little bit of filling right here too, just to fix that seam. But other than those couple spots, it, it all fit very well. Um, there's like no gaps along here, so sorry for the jerkiness here, but uh, no, it, it looks very good. Um, yeah, so I'm quite happy with that. I'll say we'll, once this is all dry, we'll get the clamps off and get in there and really inspect everything. And, do our Mr. Surfacer and filling as we need to. And uh, uh, now that the wings are joined, I one of the first things I think I'm gonna do is to mask off the wings entirely so that all that paintwork is protected. Um, I'm probably gonna use, in these areas, I've got some of the clear frisket mask, so I'm gonna lay that on so I can see the camouflage through it so I can make sure that my camouflage lines up when I paint it on the fuselage. Um, but, uh, yeah, the rest of it should go very well, um, so I'll carry you through it. Okay, so, coming right along here, um, I've just been addressing, uh, filling these seams, and, and as you can see, I got those two windows installed, with, and they're masked now, but I just came in with a little bit of filler and a little bit of, uh, followed by a little bit of Mr. Surfacer 500, and what I did was just put masking tape either side of it so that I kept it really localized and then sanded it out with a sanding stick, nice and smooth. And uh, yeah, looking really good. I rescribed the 
lines going this way, just around the door there. And uh, like I say, I'll be using some decal sheet to do those tape lines, both here and here, going around. And I did the same thing with the wing joints. I just put a big bead of masking tape there and on the fuselage and just spread some filler and Mr. Surfacer in there. And uh, yeah, just filled the gap. And uh, with the masking tape still in place, just came along with a cotton bud with some of the uh, uh, leveling thinners and cleaned it away and it left a nice little fillet there. So that's looking really good. Just enough to fill any gap there. So this is coming right along. Um, I'm going to be doing some more perfectionist, you know, gap filling and stuff just to get it really nice before I start getting into paint. But paint is coming right around the corner. So like I say, I'll be masking the wings entirely and, uh, and then starting with all my pre-shading with the black and get all that done. And uh, I'll pre-shade the black and then I'll do the camouflage, I think, first. And then once the camouflage is on, I'll mask that and then spray the black underneath and then finish off with all the lettering. That's gonna be the trick. So just filling in the seams on the fuselage. So you can see I mask either side of whatever seams that I'm doing so that I'm not gonna risk sanding away any of the rivet detail. Um, so my uh, rescribing and that is minimal. Um, so yeah, I've sanded these. They're looking really nice. Just got rid of any minor step that was barely there. So I just took that edge off, looking much better. I, I, as you can see, I used some Mr. Surfacer, so I've applied it, and now I'm gonna come along with the Mr. Color Leveling Thinners and a cotton bud and clean those away to leave a nice little fillet. Um, yeah, these, uh, the escape hatch windows sit up a little high, which I don't really like. I might try to sand them down a little bit, but I, I'm afraid, because like there is a, a frame around them, and so I've masked the center glass part, so I'm thinking about sanding the frame itself down on a beveled angle, maybe, just to, I'm not sure, it's risky. If I go off the frame and into the glass, then I permanently scratched it, but we'll see. I'm gonna experiment here and see what I can do, make them look a little nicer. And here you go, look at how nice that looks. I've just cleaned away the excess Mr. Surfacer with the cotton bud and just left, you know, just leaves a beautiful filled line, much cleaner. There's a couple areas you can see I need to reapply some there. You can see where it bubbled, but uh, yeah, just leaves a nice filled line around those hatches and in those cracks, very nice. And again here, I've just uh, applied more Mr. Surfacer to all of those seams. Um, we didn't have much stepping down here. It was quite a good fit, but there's still, there's a couple areas where you can see more of a gap than what the kit has cast into it. So I want it to all blend together and the gaps to all be the same. So that's where this Mr. Surfacer really helps. So I've gone over all those seams, let it dry, and then tomorrow I'll come in with the Mr. Color Leveling Thinners on a cotton bud and wipe it all away and you'll just be left with a nice clean fillet in the in the gap to make it all smooth and even. And uh, I can come in with some sanders as well and clean it up. We'll see what it needs. But uh, yeah, really nice stuff to work with and really does the trick well. Okay, so just getting into the final uh, little bits of filling and sanding. Um, I've pretty much done the entire fuselage now. I've, you know, worked the top, I've got it all sorted, and I'm just finishing off little areas on the bottom um, with more Mr. Surfacer and sanding it out or using the leveling thinners, depending on the area or what I'm trying to do. Um, one thing I'll say, whenever I'm sanding out areas, like I'm, I'm trying to hide these seams sort of thing, so I fill them and then generally sand them because I don't want to leave a fillet. Um, I want it to just be smooth and make that seam disappear. So yeah, I fill the seam and sometimes it takes a few applications and I sand it out. And obviously I got tape here to protect all my rivet detail. There is no 
rivets in this area so um and yeah i always i i use my different grades of the infinity sanding sticks they're they're really great i've got a full set of them and then this is another one that i use all the time um it's a flex file so this is the coarsest grit and then you work your way to the white and then finally you polish it with this gray on the back and this is you can feel it it's very smooth but it it makes it shiny like glass like you could polish a, a canopy with a new one of these and, and make it perfect again so these are really great and um yeah like i say just using masking tape to localize my sanding so all these seams there here i would put masking tape either side of the joint and just sand that joint and not get into any of my rivets um so really careful uh sanding work there um you can see that's another seam i've made disappear it's perfectly smooth now um, and again i i masked off that uh the uh emergency escape hatch door so I don't affect any of its rivet detail and uh, now masking the wings are starting to I've still got to do all the landing gear in that but uh, yeah next steps that I'm going to be getting into are painting this fuselage so we'll start with the pre-shading like I did on the wings and then I'll do the camouflage first and then mask that and then do all the under black so I'm going to be saving that for the next video, showing you all the painting of the fuselage and doing the lettering on the side with more of that one-man army masking set. And I'm going to have to be making my own masks uh, to do the actual letters because uh, I'm doing uh, the KMZ from 44 Squadron, uh, ED331. So I'm going to have to make all that numbering and lettering um, drawing it out and cutting it out of masking tape i guess and uh and doing it that way so that's all for the next video um i will wrap this one up here so until next time i'm jeff chrysler a detail enthusiast we'll see you again